good evening everyone i'm savita and uh, this is my presentation um, it's the story of the school teacher who overindulged uh, in casualty uh, two months ago we had a 42 year old male a school teacher from bello who presented to casualty with dry cough for one month loss of weight and appetite for one month chest pain for the last three days and shortness of breath for the last three days uh, his dry cough had no positional or diurnal variation. He lost 4 kilos over the last one month and he was experiencing some loss of appetite, heaviness and pain over the left side of his chest, shortness of breath on exertion and he was currently MMRC grade 2 at the time of examination. Breathlessness worsens on lying down and he's a smoker with 4 pack years of history and consumes alcohol but only at social events. No history of hemoptysis, fever, radiation of chest pain, palpitations, syncope, wheeze, uh, any family history of malignancy and no history of contact with tuberculosis. Uh, when we examined him, he was alert, conscious and oriented. His vitals were stable. He was febrile, uh, no pallor, ictris, clubbing, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy or edema. Uh, uh, on uh, the respiratory system, inspection showed decreased movement of the left side chest wall, no visible deformities. Auscultation revealed a normal vesicular breath sounds over the right hemithorax with occasional scattered crackles and absent breath sounds over the left hemithorax. Um, uh, his cardiovascular system abdomen, abdomen was soft with some mild tenderness on palpation over the epigastric region and CNS he had no focal neurologic deficits. This was his chest x-ray. It showed a left sided pleural effusion with the tracheal shift to the right. Also there was a lower mediastinal shift. Um, we investigated him and um, his counts were normal at that point. Uh, he was um, uh, serum electrolytes, LFT was all within normal limits. Uh, the left sided pleural effusion was tapped. Uh, just one second, sir. I put it in the next slide. Okay. So w when we tapped him, uh, he had uh, f uh, he had frank hemorrhagic uh, fluid and 800 ml was drained. So at this point, our differentials were a malignant pleural effusion, a tubercular pleural effusion, or maybe a complicated paranemonic effusion. Um, uh, we sent the pleural fluid for cytology. Um, uh, we we expect we actually expected that it would have uh, malignant cells because it was so hemorrhagic, but it just showed a few inflammatory cells, and the pleural fluid expert was negative, uh, and it showed that I mean it was an exudative fluid. However, because of the appearance of the pleural fluid, we went ahead and did, and the high suspicion of malignancy, considering his history as a smoker, we went ahead with a medical thoracoscopy. It showed thickened pleura, but however, there were no other significant findings. The pleural biopsy was negative for both granuloma or um, malignancy of any kind. The pleural tissue on culture grew klebsiella pneumonia, sensitive to piperacillin. So at this point, we had uh, we th we our diagnosis was a left-sided complicated paranemonic effusion, and uh, we thought the case was closed. We started on IV antibiotics, uh, pip uh, piptas, because the klebsiella was sensitive to it, and uh, an ICD was inserted uh, to drain his effusion, and his daily output was monitored. The patient was symptomatically improving, and he was discharged from the ward, and uh, he was continuing IV uh, antibiotics, and he was asked to review with us. Uh, in the OPD where we would screen him again and decide on uh, ICD uh, removal. However, within two weeks of discharged, uh, discharge, he came back to casualty uh, with the same complaints and in addition this time he had high grade fever for three days, shortness of breath, abdominal pain for one week and increasing drain output. This time the drain output was not hemorrhagic but it had a clear fluid. Um, we again um, asked him for history um, and this time he, uh, he, he said that he had been consuming alcohol regularly for the last four years, four to five days a week. Uh, he was febrile 102 when he entered casualty, um, pulse was 118, BP was normal, saturation 96% in room air. He had bilateral decreased breath sounds over the mammary infrascapular, axillary and infraaxillary regions. On examining his abdomen, there was guarding, tenderness on palpation over the epigastric region and left hypochondrium. Bowel sounds were present. This was his uh, x-ray during his second visit to casualty. He, um, uh, the first time he had a unilateral pleural effusion, this time he had a bilateral pleural effusion. Uh, the ICD is still seen on the left side where we had inserted it during his previous admission. 
uh, investigations his serum amylase was 132 serum lipase 144 total counts had increased to 18200 and pleural fluid amylase was 532 so our new set of differentials at this point was an acute pancreatitis a pancreatic effusion a paranemonic effusion or maybe malignancy that got missed out despite his thoracoscopy last time we did we did a ct abdomen and thorax uh, during his uh, stay in casualty itself it showed features suggestive of chronic pancreatitis and the pleural fluid analyzed was reanalyzed for a second time negative again for both tb and malignancy however in the ward after admission the patient continued to have a uh, high grade fever and abdominal pain despite supportive management for his chronic pancreatitis uh, so we went ahead and did an mri abdomen uh, and this is what his MRI showed. Um, there is a there, uh, there is a large pancreatic collection uh, which is actually compressing the stomach because of its uh, sheer size, and also the pancreas is uh, seen right below that. The um, there was also a large the large pancreatic collection. Uh, it had a connection into the pleura, so there was a pancreatic pleural fistula. Now the patient was uh, we asked for a gastro consult, and the patient got readmitted under gastroenterology and uh, an endoscopic nasogeginal tube was placed. We continued supportive management uh, for the uh, treatment of pancreatitis. Uh, over the course of a few days, his drain output from his ICD also gradually decreased. We continued intravenous antibiotics and um, uh, he was discharged when he he is also reviewed in uh, opd now the patient is currently symptom free his icd has been removed because the level of his pleural fluid and drain output decreased he's uh, planned for stent placement at a later date with gastro and he's staying well away from alcohol and all's well that ends well uh, learning points from this patient were um, about a short, I mean, a bit about the pancreatic or pleural fistula. It's a rare complication that occurs with uh, either acute or chronic pancreatitis, and it requires a high index of suspicion in patients who develop alcohol-induced pancreatitis and present with a pleural effusion, which is persistent and keeps recurring. Uh, the pathophysiology behind it being uh, there is a disruption of the main pancreatic duct which can cause a direct leak and the leak from this incomplete or there can be a leak from an incompletely formed or ruptured pancreatic pseudocyst. This leakage of pancreatic fluid can cause, I mean, can cause a fistulous tract to form which passes through the aortic or esophageal diaphragmatic orifice and into the pleura. Uh, we can reach a, a conclusive diagnosis based on the pleural fluid amylase levels. Uh, imaging modalities uh, used, useful for this would be an ERCP or an MRCP. A CT or an MRI can also pick it up. Treatment, uh, the conservative medical management for the pancreatitis um, and exocrine suppression with octreotide, ERCP stenting for the fistulous pancreatic duct. Also, um, in this patient, the first time he visited casualty, he said he was a social, uh, he social, he consumed alcohol only at social events. Uh, so it can be a sensitive uh, topic to take history from a patient, especially um, one who comes with relatives or friends. And so they might not want to tell us the full extent of their um, uh, alcohol consumption or smoking history because they often feel they have to give us an answer which they think is the right answer. So it might take a bit of careful uh, questioning and work to find out the true level of such things. Thank you. Any comments from the audience? Is part of the pancreatic cyst which was present in the first admission itself? Um, actually, sir, during his first admission, there was, uh, I mean, there was no pancreatic collection and we, uh, he didn't really have much of abdominal pain. So, uh, he was not screened with, with an ultrasound or any imag imaging modalities for a pancreatic collection. At that time, uh, pancreatitis itself was not on our list of differentials. Uh, so that, and especially since his pleural tissue grew Klebsiella pneumonia. Was the tissue or fluid? Plural tissue, sir. Tissue. Yeah. So because of that, we thought it was a complicated paranemonic effusion and started him on treatment for the same. And initially he was improving. So at the time he left the ward, he was doing quite well actually. So um, So he consumed alcohol while he was in 
uh, discharge between the two admissions? Uh, yes, sir. He confessed to have. He was That's consuming good. alcohol, um, probably not while he was staying in the ward, but continued okay. after he left as well. So you feel that the second admission is an acute pancreatitis? No, sir. A? I think it is probably a chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis. Yeah. Because his amylase and lipase levels were also not high enough to say it was an acute presentation. And his history is also quite chronic and uh, so. Sure. This patient should not have been discharged with the diagnosis of complicated paranormal effusion. That was not the diagnosis. He did not have high fever. He had no features of underlying consolidation of the lung. There was no pus in the pleural cavity. Pleural fluid was negative for any organism. So it was, uh, he had an unexplained uh, left-sided pleural effusion. Mm. We did not investigate him enough to find out the cause. Pleural tissue grew clepsial and pneumonia. That is not a feature of empyema thoracis or complicated parenchymal effusion. So the diagnosis should have been established during the first admission itself. The second time, how was the right-sided pleural effusion managed? Again, you put an ICD into that? Yes, sir. Actually, we went ahead and inserted an ICD on the right side as well. So, during his OPD visit, after uh, the whole diagnosis was made, um, one visit, we removed one ICD. During the second follow-up visit, the left one was also removed. Did you have any other features of chronic pancreatitis like exocrine or endocrine insufficiency? Uh, not really, sir. No. Okay, we'll go to the next next case from Medicine 4, 